Hello and welcome. I am Gimba Umar. Tonight, army discovers shallow grave allegedly used to bury missing army general in Plata State as district head of community and three others linked to the incident report to the police. President Buhari calls on the United States and Europe to assist in the interbasin water transfer. To recharge the Lake Chad says that crisis in region is fueling irregular migration. An African Union Commission chairperson challenges Nigerian political leaders to lead the way for good governance, security and building up a strong and stable economy on the continent. A 56-year-old man arrested in Florida over US mail bombing campaign targeting President Donald Trump's critics. On Business News tonight, Minister for Trade and Investment of the Chukwene Lama raises hope for resolution of $10 billion dispute between MTN and the federal government. And on Sports News tonight, World Football Governing Body FIFA raises the prize money for the Women's World Cup from $15 million to $30 million, starting with next year's edition in France. And from Abuja, Minimum Wage Tripartite Committee continues move to avert industrial action by labor unions, set to meet with state governors next Monday. We begin tonight with what may be a major breakthrough in the Army's search for the retired general who was missing in Plateau State following the discovery of a shallow grave where he was allegedly buried by his assailants. This is according to General Officer Commanding 3 Division of the Nigerian Army, Major General Benson Akinro Luyo, during a press briefing in Jos on the update of the cordon and search operation. General Akinro Luyo explains that the youth who allegedly killed retired General Idris Al-Kali removed his body from the shallow grave when his car was found in a mining pit in Dura Du community of Plateau State. He says that the grave was discovered about two kilometers away from the mining pit with the assistance of sniffer dogs at another community known as No Man's Land. When the General's Black Toyota Corolla car was recovered from the abandoned mining pit, those involved and those not involved in the killing of the officer had a meeting to relocate his corpse away from the community. This is because of the inherent danger it will attract to the community. Consequently, a 10-man team was constituted to relocate his corpse earlier buried in a shallow grave within the community to elsewhere. A specialist in preservation of corpse was contracted. The specialist assisted in assuming his course from the shallow grave to somewhere else. Only few trusted members of the community knew where his corpse was relocated to. The specialist is currently in our custody. Again, this is an attempt to cover up the heinous crime committed by the community. There exist other evidence and indicators that pointed to the fact that those who are involved in the killing of the sin officer are being supported and backed by the community leaders within the Duradu district. In the meantime, the district head of Duradu village in just south local government area of Plateau State, Yakubu Rapp, has reported to the police command after he was uh, declared wanted over the disappearance of Major General Idris Alkali. The police public relations officer in the state command, Mr. Yepev Mathias confirmed this to Channel's television today. Three other suspects declared wanted along with the district head have also surrendered to the police. The village head was declared wanted along with seven others following preliminary investigations which indicated that they allegedly masterminded the abduction, assault and caused the disappearance of the retired army officer. Major General Al-Kali, a former chief of administration of the army headquarters, has been missing since September the 3rd, 2018, while traveling to Bochi State from Abuja via Joss in a black Toyota Corolla car, which was later discovered in a lake in the village. The Imo State Police Command has rescued five National Youth Corps members. 
who were kidnapped on Wednesday on their way from the three-week NYC orientation course in Rivers and Aquaibum states. Briefing newsmen in Overrated State Capital, the Imo State Commissioner of Police, Dazuki Galadinchi, said that the core members were kidnapped along over a Port Harcourt Expressway and taken to the Umuapu Forest in Ohaji, uh, Egbema local government area. He explained that the operatives of the counter-terrorism units of the command were alerted and the kidnappers were rounded up while their victims were, were rescued from the forest. According to the CP, the kidnappers had earlier established contact with the families of the core members and demanded five million naira ransom. Elsewhere, the Kaduna state government has reinstated the 24-hour curfew after the killing of the traditional ruler of Adara Chivdom, Chief Mewada Galadima, who was kidnapped by gunmen six days ago. The kidnappers had last week Friday evening intercepted the convoy of the royal father at Smeyali village along Kaduna Kachia and opened fire on the vehicles, which forced them to come to a halt. During the operation, the traditional ruler's police orderly and three others in his convoy were shot dead by the bandits, who later took him and his wife away to an unknown destination. While the traditional ruler's wife later regained her freedom two days after, he was held hostage by his abductors, who later demanded for ransom from his family. However, the body of the traditional ruler was found near a bush at Katiri area along the Kaduna Abuja Highway in the early hours of today. The spokesman of the Kaduna State Government, Samuel Arwan, who confirmed the incident, described uh, the incident as uh, inhuman, and he calls for calm in all the communities where this is, this is affecting, while assuring that those behind the killing of the monarch will not go free. He calls on the citizens of the state to unite against every criminal activity and stand together as human beings who have a right to live and to live in peace. The president says that the greatest um, investment Europe and America can make in Africa now is to help the continent accomplish interbasin water transfer to recharge the lake basin. President Mohamed Buhari expressed this desire at the State House today when he hosted the chairman of the African Union Commission, Mr. Mosa Faki Mohamed. In a statement, he noted that the impact of the climate change has shrunk the Lake Chad, a source of livelihood to millions of people in Chad, Cameroon, Niger Republic, and Nigeria to 10% of its original size. According to the president, he said, quote, people who depend on the lake and for fishing, farming, animal husbandry, and many others have been thrown into dire straits. This is one of the reasons youths who dare the Sahara Desert and the Mediterranean Sea find themselves wanting to seek greener pastures in Europe, but helping to recharge the lake will help a great deal in curbing irregular migration. The president also promised that issues of security, including the influx of small arms from the Sahel, which has worsened the conflict between herders and farmers, will be kept on the front burner. The AU Commission chairman, on his part, has commended President Muhammad Buhari, saying that his leadership was good for Africa, for Nigeria, and indeed for the generality of the African continent. He describes Nigeria as the engine of Africa politically, economically, and in the areas of peace and security. In the meantime, the chairperson of the African Union Commission, Mr. Mosa Mohamed, is asking Nigerian political leaders to work harder and lead the way for good governance, security, as well as build a strong and stable economy. Mr. Mohamed, who made the appeal while delivering a public lecture to participants of the course 27 of the National Defense College in Abuja, believes that Nigeria can provide solutions to some of Africa's problems. According to him, the African continent is struggling with very difficult challenges, including insecurity, human and drug trafficking, and a high unemployment rate. The chairperson of the African Union Commission inspects the God of Anna. May I have your permission to dismiss the guards into the guest room, Your Excellency? 
before proceeding to the hall where participants of the course 27 of the NDC are already seated. Accompanied by other diplomats, the chairperson of the African Union Commission is here to deliver a lecture on the topic, the importance of regional integration, democracy and good governance in the Africa of our dreams. The commandant of the college sets the tune as he highlights the justification for the topic. Security in the contemporary terms does not reside with how much you are able to put in place the necessary infrastructure, facilities or measures within your geographical or sovereign domain, but rather your ability to also take into consideration events across the border, across the region. And this is uh, precisely the situation many African states have found themselves. Next, the guest lecturer takes to the podium, stressing the urgent need for the African Union to find solutions to regional challenges, which include terrorism, trafficking in persons, and unemployment. He also appeals to the Nigeria government to take the lead. There is no strategy better than the integration of the continent. Democracy and good governance to achieve the Africa we want. And a key driver for this dream, ladies and gentlemen, remains this great nation of Nigeria. Nelson Mandela said, and I quote, the world will never respect Africa until Nigeria earns that respect. The black people of the world are looking up to Nigeria to be a source of pride and confidence. Every Nigerian citizen should be made to understand these truths. On the sidelines of the event, the guest lecturer speaks on the need for the African Union to support the anti-corruption crusade in the region. Uh, corruption uh, becomes a phenomenon in, in Africa, uh, a real threat for our development. I think it is, uh, it is an important issue and we, we, we must deal with it uh, seriously. Member states of the African Union have signed several agreements for regional integration as well as social and economic security. But not much of the objectives have been realized. Some of the participants here are, however, hopeful that these efforts will translate into socio-economic development in the region in the days ahead. In part two, after the break, more on the African Union and regional economy. We'll be speaking to Dr. Dapo Thomas, a senior lecturer, International Relations, Lagos State University. Plus, suspected kidnapper Chukudu Meme Wamadike Elias Evans says that police obtained statement from him on the duress. Please stay with us.